Establishing working structures is not an easy task, not only because of the technical and economical aspects that we have just mentioned, but also due to the sheer number of all possible combinations. In the example of our vacuum cleaner, we have listed the working principles for just a couple of product subfunctions. It seems like a relatively small number of solutions. However, when calculating the product of all working principle variants, we arrive at 2,304 distinct working structure combinations. This is quite a number, right? And realistically speaking, we won't be able to check all of them in depth. That is why filtering of working principles in the search phase is so important. Now, let us imagine there has been a change to our requirements list and the main focus of the design process now is delivering a vacuum cleaner with the lowest cost possible. Just think for a minute, which working principles would you combine into a working structure under those circumstances? Feel free to stop the video and think on it for a while. This is the combination we came up with. Collecting and conducting dust would be realized with a simple flexible hose with a flat end. The vacuum creation and air filtering would use the most rudimental working principles and the fill indication could be done with a simple view slot. This would result in a cheap product that would probably not be very pleasant to use, but would satisfy our requirements. Probably such vacuum cleaner would be more suitable for industrial use than household application. Now, let us think about an application where cost does not play any role and the main requirement is to please the end customer. What working structure would you choose here? Here is our proposal. It combines a more complex solution for collecting dust. Conducting it would make use of a pipe with extendable length. The vacuum creation and air filtering would use more sophisticated and therefore more efficient and quiet working principles. The power knob would allow a wide range of adjustment and the fill would be measured with the help of an active proximity sensor. As you can see, both working structures address different customer needs reflected in the requirements list. In case of a real-life product development, you should be able at this point to use the requirements list to narrow down the working structure selection. In case you are overwhelmed with the sheer number of working structure combinations, there are some best practices that should help you in this task. First, you should aim for narrow morphological boxes. Try to decompose your function structure into higher number of subfunctions and then list only few most relevant working principles for each of them. Try to establish critical subfunctions and put them on top of the morphological box. It will force you to directly address the functionalities that are most important for fulfilling the requirements. Another way of making the process more efficient is grouping similar working principles which will allow you to assess them together. In some cases, splitting the morphological box into smaller ones dedicated to particular flows and solving them separately might also help. <laughs>